Where's my iPhone, dog? Matter of fact, where's my iPhone, dog? Where's my iPhone, dog? Matter of fact, where's my iPhone, dog? I stick to YouTube. It's like TV. Harlem, 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 Harlem. This is my Sunday Times. This is my Sunday New York Times. This is my Sunday New York Times. I'm in Harlem, New York. And I'm going to walk around because it's like the second day of spring, but like the first or the second really beautiful day since spring started. And it's only two days. So and it's Sunday. It's New York. So I'm going to give you an update. This is my Sunday New York Times walking on the New York City pavement. It's pretty much like what you would think it is still graffiti. There's still abandoned houses, but these houses aren't populated by uh, crackheads. They're not, they're, they're populated by landlords. And these landlords are building up buildings to turn investment on them. Like uh, there's this building right here. For instance, that building, not too long ago, it was really run down. And they recently just really just build it all up again. Now look at it. I guarantee you the apartments in that building are super expensive. Guarantee. A lot of pre-war buildings. And these pre-war buildings have a lot of big spaces in them. I actually want to see what that building is like inside. These apartments look really big. In New York, we tend to walk the streets. We walk in the streets, not just walk these streets. We walk in the streets. You never ever walked on the sidewalk when you were younger because what would happen is you could get into some serious trouble. Somebody could run up on you. If you're in the street, you have more options. That's why old New Yorkers, we walk in the street. <laughs> the new crowd, the new youngsters don't know about that. So they walk on the sidewalk like as you should. Here's Jacobs. Here's the infamous Jacobs. You know it. Hey. This right here is where you want to go to get some really good soul food. I think they're African, but they make really, really good food. They have oxtail, they have um, jerk chicken, they have regular chicken, baked chicken, all sorts of, basically, they cover the black diaspora, seafood, everything from all cultures, all in Jacobs in one. And it's a buffet style. They're expensive, but it's well worth it. And on top of that, you get the actual fruits and vegetables and stuff like that to go along with your plate. Really, really good. Jacobs is a staple. Take a 360 of Harlem on 128th and Lenox. You ha always have like people yelling on the phone at whoever they're talking to on the other line. It looks like a lot of people talking to themselves, especially in Harlem when they're just yelling into the phone. It's kind of jarring, but once you get used to it, you tend not to mind. This right here is a Lenox Sapphire. This is like a social club type day spot. I'm trying to be respectful by not getting people on camera. But as you can see, you have the dudes on the corner. They're hanging out. And that's, uh, that's also like, um, not just Harlem, that's just like a black person staple. You know, that's what black people do. We hang out. That's our culture. That's where we come from. No matter 400, 500 years removed from Africa, we still practice the same traditions. That's the infamous Sylvia's across the street. Sylvia's is like uh, Amy Ruth's. It's like one of those staples. You have to go to Harlem. You eat the, chip, the food there, the soul food. Pretty solid. Can't go wrong. As you can see, there's a packed line across the street. And this is like the new 125th or the new Lenox Avenue where they have Corner Social. Look, it's like an official little tent they're building where you can't eat inside, but you can eat outside. This is more developed. And across the street is Red Rooster. Red Rooster. That is another famous restaurant, Red Rooster. It is a, this is the Sunday Times in Harlem. They're selling oils and I guess toiletries. And then you have the halal court carts right next to the subway, 125th, two and three train. All of this, selling food right next to the subway. Straight down 125th, 
is the Empire State Building and all those tall buildings. You can see it. You can see all those tall buildings. Empire State Building and uh, the other one, the most tallest residential building in New York, is the Sunday New York Times. This is the update on what's going on in your local Harlem residence. In La Busa. It's how people get on the bus. They don't even they don't even pay for the bus anymore. You could just get on for free. If it's the double bus, you don't even have to pay. You just get on. Well, you do have to pay, but nobody does. Cuz they have these weird like station setups. I don't understand it, but I, I don't get it. It's just free bus rides though. Just don't get caught. Before this big shopping thing right here, it was just small stores like that. The whole 125th Street was small stores like that. Now these are starting to appear. This is Bill Clinton's office right over here. I just wanted to do this video to update people on what's going on in New York on Sunday. So I call it the Sunday New York Times. I mean, ever since Bill Clinton came in the federal building, Harlem has definitely seen a difference in prices, residences, the prices has gone up. Um, the, the big stores, the big store chains are here and you have more gentrification. Gentrification is important, but it also hurts communities for multiple reasons. You raise the living standard through a host of different ways, economic development, opportunities. You have to give people jobs, and that's the thing. A lot of, lot of jobs, hold on. The biker boys. A lot of politicians don't really give people jobs. They give people a lot of lip service. And that's the issue going on in the neighborhoods. And it's been like that since forever. I was looking at some videos of New York and the US in the 60s, in the 70s, in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and guess what? All the things that we, all the social issues that we are dealing with today, we've been dealing with back then. It's the same arguments, the same exact thing. Look at the federal building. Looks slanted. I have a connection to Harlem, a deep connection to Harlem. When I was young, my uncle had a store on the corner of 130th Street and Adam Clayton Powell, which is considered 6th Avenue. And we were here every Sunday, every Saturday, Sunday, and uh, we would assist with his store. And uh, we got to know a lot of the, the, the people from Harlem. I mean, Harlem is literally my second home. I love New York. I'd do anything to protect this state. This state raised me, taught me, showed me everything I know. All the people, all my closest friends are from New York and we hustle different. New Yorkers, when we go somewhere, we make, oh man, I, story time. When I went, I never, only people who know me know this story. I moved to California in 2015 when I had my second child. When I had my second child, I was working in the film industry. I didn't tell anyone I was going to California. I just up and left. And when I got there, I went with three pairs of jeans and about $60. Three, I mean, I, oh man. I mean, I, I, I didn't have anything. I mean, I, I did it on purpose. Maybe I shouldn't have done, don't follow that. Don't, don't, nobody do what I did. And I thought I was Superman and I was in my thirties. And I wasn't reclaiming my youth. I just had that kind of brain. So I got to LA and I slept on my friend's couch in three months. I had a brand new car. I had, a, I had money coming in. And that was over people that had already been living there. All of this to say, not just what you put your mind to and all of that stuff. No, if you really want something, you go out, you get it. And in three months, I had a car, I had money flowing. I was paying rent. Everything was good. And it just took three months. And I attribute that to New York. New York taught me how to hustle like that. New York also told me when I'm down, don't ever, ever rest. Don't ever, just cause you're down, don't think that you can't come up. As quick as you come down is as fast as you'll come up. That goes for anything in life. And New York taught me that. If there's a will, there's a way. And that could happen in a blink of an eye, just like that. And New York taught that to me. So I owe this state everything. I owe the people of this state everything. 
it's amazing when when even if I see someone from out of town and we start talking and we and we start oh snap you from New York blah, 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 the accent comes out we just it's just a connection you get that with anywhere but now New York is a little different it just hit different so this is my Sunday New York Times I just wanted to show you guys around Harlem a small part of Harlem Harlem is a lot bigger than what I showed you but it's just good to see what's going on. Just a little update. And uh, I stick to YouTube, it's like TV.